Hello! My birthday was September 2nd, so to celebrate, I've decided to upload episodes from my mindfulness podcast series, Reading with Carrie, every day through the month of September. Once we hit October, I'll be posting the episodes every Friday with the bonus minisodes on Saturday. To catch the episodes as they air every Wednesday, you can subscribe to my podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Click the link in the description below to go directly to my podcast's website. Hope you enjoy! Hello and welcome to Reading with Carrie, a mindfulness podcast series that can be used as a sleep aid or to ease your anxiety and relieve your stress. I am your host, Carrie Favol, and I am so thankful that you've decided to spend some time with me. Here's another story that I don't think is all that well known. I found the book at a thrift store, and upon researching to whom I should reach out for approval to share the story via my narration, I fell down quite the rabbit hole. You see, Taro and the Tofu was written by Masako Matsuno, who passed away in 2011. The version read in this video was published by the World Publishing Company in 1962, which was also acquired by the Times Mirror Company in 1962. In 1972, it was sold to Collins Publishers, who, in 1980, broke up World Publishing and sold the children's line to the Putnam Publishing Group, which was bought by the Penguin Group in 1996. In 2013, Penguin merged with Bertelsmann's Random House, forming Penguin Random House. I truly do love this story, and I wanted to share it with you for entertainment and informational purposes only. Here is a simple, basic mindfulness breathing exercise. In a comfortable sitting position, with eyes open or closed, arms wherever they are comfortable, legs in a relaxed position, take note of your body, the shape that it's in, the weight of each limb resting together. Breathe in deeply on a slow count of four. Hold the breath for just a moment and focus on the sensation in your chest. Breathe out on a slow count of four. And listen to your body. Feel the sensations, the touch of each part. The connection of you with the item you are sitting on, a chair, the bed, the carpet. Feel yourself relax. Soften your breath in a slow, steady rhythm. Don't alter your breath. Just feel the natural flow of your breath. Feel how your body naturally goes through the motion. Where do you feel the breath in your body? Can you feel it enter through your nostrils, in your throat, down in your lungs, or deeper in your stomach? Feel the sensations of your breath, and don't try to anticipate the next movement. It's all right if your mind wanders. Just gently refocus back to your breathing. Stay in the moment for a few more breaths. Feel your body in the surroundings. Where do your arms rest? What are your fingertips feeling? Where is your tongue settled in your mouth? Go through each part of the body. Now, what do you hear? How many sounds can you decipher in the room? Does your breathing make a noise? Is your stomach gurgling? Take another deep breath in on a slow count of four. And as you release this breath, 
Feel your relaxed mind slowly come back to this podcast. Don't rush. Sit in this moment a while. Indulge your sensations in the bliss. Let out a peaceful, audible sigh. You've earned it. Hmm. And now here's the story. Taro and the Tofu by Masako Matsuno Illustrated by Kazue Mizumura It was windy. The wind was cold. The cold, windy day was growing into a cold, windy night. From the window where he was watching for the tofu seller, Taro could see the evening star already twinkling in the eastern sky. Tofu is Japanese for what is called bean curd in English. It is white and shaped like a small cake. It is soft and cool to the touch, and it is very nourishing. So it is one of the most important foods of the Japanese people. Usually, Taro's mother bought tofu from an old peddler who came along the street every evening. <coughs> his trumpet sounded, calling his wares. Other tofu sellers came along the street, too. <coughs> but that wasn't the old man's trumpet. <coughs> wasn't his call, either. <coughs> Here he comes, Taro's mother would say. He is poor, but his bean curd is the best of all. And she always bought tofu from the old man. But on this cold, windy evening, the old man did not come. (coughs) Sounded. (coughs) Sounded too, but not. (coughs) In the snug, warm kitchen, Taro and his mother waited and waited, listening to each seller's trumpet until at last it was time to cook supper. I wonder what has happened to him, said Taro's mother. This is the first time he hasn't come without letting us know. Shall I run to his shop? asked Taro. His mother hesitated. It's getting dark and cold, too. That's all right, said Taro. It's not so late yet, is it? I'll get the tofu for you, mother. From beyond the village shrine woods, The cold wind blew, Taro, clutching a small pan for tofu in one hand and a silver coin in the other, began running as soon as he left the house. The shopping street was crowded with people buying good food for supper. The shops were light and gay. Come in and buy! Come in and buy! My fish are fresh! A loud voice called from a fish store. Stop, boy! Can't you smell my roasted yams? A young sweet potato seller shouted at Taro. But Taro didn't stop. This wasn't the place he was looking for. The old man's shop was much farther along the street, away from the main shopping place. That was why he went to the houses every evening to sell his tofu. Taro bumped and jostled his way through the crowd. Beyond the lights and noise of the shops, it was cold and dark and lonely. Only one dim light showed at the very end of the street. It was the light of the old man's shop. The old man was surprised to see Taro. Are you alone? he asked. Did you come here all by yourself? Yes, ojisan, which means old man. My mother needs two cakes of tofu. She waited a long time for you to come, but you didn't come. What happened? The old man took the tofu pan Taro was holding out to him. I'm sorry, he said. My grandson doesn't feel well today, so I couldn't leave him alone. But I'll come to your house tomorrow evening as usual, said the old man handing Taro the filled tofu pan. So you won't have to come down in the cold. How much? asked Taro. Thirty yen. Taro handed the coin to the old man, who slowly counted out the change under the dim light of the shop. Thank you, Taro, he said. You'd better hurry home. Your mother must be waiting for you. Yes, goodbye. Don't run, Taro, the old man shouted after him. My tofu is soft and delicate. Carry it carefully so it doesn't break. Pizza, pizza, pizza. The water which keeps bean curd cake soft and moist sloshed in the pan. Taro held it carefully against his chest. Sometimes he lifted the tofu pan high above his head so it wouldn't be bumped by the crowd and the delicate bean curd broken. But he walked fast, too. Whenever he did an errand for his mother, he was allowed to keep ten yen for himself, and he was in a hurry to get to the little candy store on the main shopping street. The candy store was run by an old lady with big glasses, who always sat in a far corner of the shop reading a newspaper. 
She rarely spoke more than a few words to her customers. Thank you, good boy, or thank you, good girl, she would say, never looking up from her paper. It was one of the seven wonders to Taro how she knew a boy was a boy, or a girl a girl, without ever looking at them. And the old lady never seemed to mind if the children took a long time to decide what to buy with their pocket money. It made Taro feel like all the candies in the store belonged to him, until at last the moment came to decide exactly what to buy. Sugar beans, chocolate candies, salted beans, chewing gum. Taro had to decide quickly today so he could hurry home with the tofu. Two packages of chocolate, he said to himself, putting his hand in his pocket for the change the old man had given him. Taro picked one of the coins to give to the old lady. But wait, it was a 50 yen coin. Where did I get this? Taro looked at the coin in surprise. I thought the old man gave me seven 10 yen coins. For the tofu was 30 yen, and I gave him a 100 yen coin. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here are six 10 yen coins and a 50 yen. Then the old man made a mistake. I must return the extra 40 yen to him right away. He will worry if he finds he has lost money. But outside it was already dark and the wind was harsh. It's getting late and very cold. A strange little voice whispered inside Taro's head. Why not tomorrow? Even if the old man worries, the mistake is his own fault. It's very cold, and mother must be waiting, the secret voice continued. Taro looked at the money in his hand, and then at the cold outdoors. It's just the same whether you give the money back tonight or tomorrow, whispered the voice again. Besides, who knows that you've got the extra money? No one needs to know. Imagine, with 40 extra yen to spend, you could buy sugar beans and salted beans, and chocolate, and chewing gum, and even more. Right? Oh, no! It was almost a shout inside him. No, no, it's not right. This is not my money. It belongs to the old man, even if it was his fault that he gave me the wrong change. I don't want the candies and chewing gum. Taro was talking to himself very fast now, as if he was in a hurry to rid himself of the strange secret voice inside his head. I will return the money right now. Oba-san, which means miss, Taro called to the lady of the candy store, but his voice sounded so dry and cracked that only a little husky whisper came out. Oba-san, he called once more. I'll take two packages of chocolate candy today. Thank you, good boy, answered the lady without looking up. Taro smiled. And may I leave my tofu pan here for just a little while? Of course you may, good boy, answered the old lady, still looking at her newspaper. Taro put his tofu pan carefully on the counter with a 10 yen coin for the candies and ran out of the store. He ran down the gay shopping street, zigzagging through the crowds of people. He was still running when he reached the little shop where the old man was bending over a big tub of tofu. Back so soon, said the old man, seeing Taro. Does your mother need more tofu? <sighs> no, I came to give this money back to you, said Taro, panting. What money? You gave me the wrong change. Forty extra yen. Really? I didn't notice it. Are you sure the money isn't yours? Yes, I'm sure. You gave me a fifty yen coin instead of a ten yen coin. I'll put the money here, all right. I must hurry. My mother is waiting for me. Thank you very much, Taro, said the old man with gladness in his face. Taro was happy, but he was embarrassed, too, for he remembered the strange little voice. Not at all, he said quickly, but before he knew it, he found himself taking one of the packages of chocolate candy from his pocket. For your grandson, Oji-san, he said. Thank you. Thank you. The old lady in the candy store was still reading her newspaper when Taro stopped to pick up the tofu pan. Thank you for keeping it for me, said Taro. Not at all, good boy, said the lady. And much to Taro's surprise, she looked straight at him. Taro had never seen her look at anything except her newspaper. What was more, she was smiling at him behind her big glasses, almost as if she knew what had happened. But no, it couldn't be possible. You'd better hurry, good boy. It's very late, said the lady. Taro nodded and went out of the store with his tofu pan. Most of the shops on the shopping street were closed now, and only a few people still lingered there. The wind was very cold. Anyway, thought Taro, it doesn't matter if the lady knows what the voice said, because I gave back the money. He was so happy that he wanted to run all the way home, but he remembered to walk carefully with the old man's delicate tofu. Pizza, pizza, top, top, 
The water in the pan sloshed softly and rhythmically, as if it was trying to match Taro's light spirit. In the warm, cozy kitchen, Taro told his parents what had happened to make him so late. He told them about finding the extra 40 yen, and he told them about returning to the old man's shop. He told them everything, except he didn't tell them about the strange secret voice in his head. Nor did he tell them about giving the candy to the old man's sick grandson. Why? I don't know. Taro just felt like keeping those things to himself, I think. May I have a chocolate candy now? He asked. Yes, but just one. Supper is almost ready, said his mother, stirring the tofu into the delicious smelling soup. It was still windy outside, and the wind was so cold. Yes, I have told you it was a cold, windy night, haven't I? But Taro felt warm, and the chocolate candy tasted good, you know? The End Again, I love this story for the restraint, honesty, and integrity Taro shows. He doesn't want to worry his mother, but at the same time, he knows he must return the money. It's so wholesome and innocent, and the whole story just gives me the warm fuzzies, don't you agree? I will leave you with this closing thought by C.S. Lewis. Integrity is doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. Thank you for listening. I welcome you back anytime you may need to hear a comforting voice or a familiar bedtime story. Title, Taro and the Tofu. Author, Masako Matsuno. Illustrated by Kazue Mizumura. The publishing rights, I believe, now belong to Penguin Random House, although I can't be sure for certain. This rendition of Taro and the Tofu is for entertainment and informational purposes only and is not intended, nor will it be used for commercial use.